So you're back. I hope you're back anyway. I'm back. We're all back for week two of Lent, uh, our journey of connection, to connect with God, to connect with one another, and to, of course, uh, to connect with ourselves, a God who connects with us. So it's week two. Last week, where were we? We were in the desert, as you know. This week, we're going up the mountain, and we're going into the clouds. Uh, and of course, cloud is another kind of uh, internet uh, uh, word. Uh, for connection, right? We've all heard about the cloud and wondered where that is and where all of our information is being stored in the clouds. Anyway, so like the disciples, Jesus takes the disciples up, up the mountain for that experience of the transfiguration. That is always the story we read about the second story, uh, second Sunday of every Lent. Always transfiguration. Now I want to talk about that, that story, but I also want to talk a little bit about the first reading uh, from Genesis. So if you, if you are able to read that one as well this week, I would really love it if you could do that. Um, because actually it's one of my favorite stories, it's very selfish of me, but it's very, one of my favorite stories, and it also is a connection to the gospel in a special way. So in the first story, uh, the gospel story, Jesus takes his disciples up the mountain for this transfiguration, and they begin to experience Jesus in a new way. They see Jesus in a new light. They begin to see him really as the Messiah. This is being revealed to them. They're beginning to see that this Jesus is not just a man, not just a teacher, but this is the Messiah, the Son of God. So they begin to see Jesus in a new light. That's really important because in the first reading, that wonderful story of uh, uh, Abraham taking Isaac up the mountain and a story you know that we've all kind of shiver about because uh, Abraham is told by God to 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 make a sacrifice to sacrifice his only son Isaac to him and it's kind of a really frightening kind of story obviously and we can get kind of stuck on it but I'm going to tell you why it's one of my favorite stories and I'm also going to tell you this I, I have a painting of the story um, and I, this actually hangs in my bedroom, if you can believe it, because it's one of my favorite paintings as well. And I know it's really gruesome. And you're thinking, what is wrong with La Brigada? But anyway, so you look at this, you can see um, most people would, would focus on poor Isaac's face. I mean, he is like really, uh, I mean, he is in obvious distress uh, because there, his father is holding a knife to him. Not, all right, most people would focus on that, but that's not what I, that's, that's not what I focus on. What I focus on is this. This arm of the angel holding, holding Abraham's hand back. Because the, the point of this story is, is that God does not want this. So Abraham, now remember, Abraham's living like 1200 BC. Abraham is now figuring out who is this God? And what does this God want from me? And what kind of God is he? And how is he different from all the other gods? So Abraham, from this point on, will begin to see God in a new light not as a God who wants human sacrifice, not as a God who wants to take our lives or wants violence or evil. That's how this God is going to be different. You get that? So, so Abraham sees God in a, different, in a different light. And here's the really neat thing. Look here, did you notice the ram in the picture? That's the ram in the thicket that he then makes the sacrifice. He replaces Isaac with the ram. Of course, this is the lamb of God. God will then eventually, this is, that's how it's connected to Jesus and the story on Calvary. Jesus is the Lamb of God. So, seeing Jesus in a new light. What, what was your initial contact with God? Think about that. Go all the way back to your childhood. Maybe you guys can talk a little bit about that. Your initial contact with God. What was that? What, what, how did you relate to God when you were a kid? How's that changed? How's that grown? You have a history with God. Have you ever thought of it that way? You have a history. You have a relationship with God. That, that has grown and changed throughout, throughout the years. And also, you're part of a church that has a relationship with God, a history with God as well, that's changed and grown throughout the years, our understanding of who God is. In what ways is that even growing now? As we get closer to God and understand God in new, in new ways, what might God be revealing to us today about himself and how he wants us to live and love in the world today? Lots of things to think about as we establish contact with God, our initial contact with God. Think about it. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you on Sunday Mass. Bye-bye.